I've started putting the cedar on the stairs, boxing the bottom in and coming around here. I put a, an extra two before brace block in there. And on this side, there will be a, a door where they'll have access to go underneath there to use this area for storage. I have cedar cut for the risers and the treads are all red cedar right out of the heart. So I'm having to kind of cut around some of these pieces. When you get a red cedar log that's big enough to get one to twelves out of, sometimes right in the middle of it will have doty or rotten spots in it. So you have to kind of cut around that. But I was able to come up with enough to completely cover this, which uh, I think it's going to be nice. What I'm using for the upright pieces are a, a one by six, and I took my router and routed a bevel on both edges to give it that V-edge look. This is not tongue and groove, but this stuff is extremely dry, and I think it'll work okay. In wrapping this red cedar around these stands, I'm having to scribe one piece that goes up against the logs here. Now these logs at this point have settled completely, and I've just put my board up there and I plumbed it and I put a little block down there at the bottom to hold it and I've got one here at the top to hold it and I'll show you how I scribed that it's a kind of a poor bore method but it it works pretty well I've got my board up here I've got it fixed to where it can't move and I've got a just a little stick that uh, I've whittled it to a, I've got a point there and right there is a little tiny notch just so that my pencil lead can set in that. And I just bring it over here and I can hold my pencil in that, uh, that little notch and I can just go down and I just kind of, the best I can, eyeball this as being level. And I go down through there with it up against the log and just make a pencil mark and go into the contour of the of the chinking gaps all the way down and then I can take the board and take my saber saw or jigsaw and cut that out sometimes I have to do a little sanding on it to to get it to work right but it does pretty well for me I know there's probably something better than this but this works for me and hey if it works I just keep using it okay I've got it cut out and set up there the scribe piece it worked okay. There's only one of these that I have to do. So, thankful for that. I can go ahead now and uh, put the rest of these boards on. I've got the cedar board that goes over and covers up the stringer. I've just got it clamped on there. There at the very bottom, I took my level and I made a plumb mark and cut it plumb so that I can make all this that goes across this area right here that's still bare. I can make it work out. Got a lot of intersections taking place here. But after I get those pieces on, then I can uh, go ahead and nail this. Okay, I've got the V edge around the little door, or what will be a door, and I've started putting these shorter pieces on underneath right here, and I've got several of them cut. I think there's seven or eight there. I'm just shooting these on with finish nails in my little nailer, and that'll box in the bottom side of this. to fit these up here against the logs and I'm not really fitting against the plywood 
but I've cut these on a little bit of a bevel on the top side, which is uh, a three degree bevel that I, I ripped them on the table saw. And I want this outside edge just to be a tiny bit higher than the plywood so that when I put the tread on, I'll have a nice clean fit across here. Now I realize down this low, it'd be really difficult to see that. I'm just scribing against the logs and making that fit. Some of these I'm shaving just a little tiny bit off of the bottom. You can see some of my shavings there I'm using a block plane. It's set real light and it's really sharp. I'm also doing a little bit of a bevel right here so that this point right here will touch before the backside does because I'm going to run a piece of trim underneath the, the tread and over the top of the end of the risers. I've got this one fit against the log, so I'm ready to uh, cut it for length. I'm setting these up here, keeping them tight against the log over here, and I'm taking my little 12 inch steel ruler, and I'm just laying it up there so that I'm completely straight across here with it. And I'm marking very lightly on the top side of my riser. And I'll square that down and take it in there to the miter saw and cut it. What I'm doing here, I want a slight bevel from this edge to the, to the back side of it. And I've just got a little sliver of wood, a little piece of wood, which actually raises the edge that I'm going to cut up enough that when the blade comes straight down, it's actually cutting a bevel. Because where my cut line is, that's what I, the point that I want to touch the edge that you see will be a nice clean cut. Now I can see that tiny bevel. It may be difficult to see on the camera, but there's a, a little bit of a bevel from this point here to right here. So that when I put my little trim pieces underneath the treads and go up through the side of the stringers, everything will be a nice clean, hopefully, I should say, be a nice clean fit at this point right here that you'll actually visually see. Now before I nail this, I'm taking my treads and I'm setting them up there and I'm checking to see the fit that I have across here. Make sure it's going to be good and tight because I may have to if it's not perfect, I may have to put a little wedge behind it somewhere to bring it out to where I have a, a pretty clean fit. And that's, that's going to be okay. So I can go ahead and nail that up. I've got it up there good and tight. Get this out of the way. I'm going to set my tread back up there make sure everything's still good and it's going to be good so I can work my way on up. I started putting the uh, treads on. I already have the risers on on this first four steps here. I'm having to fit these against the logs so I'm actually scribing that. You can see I've got a gap on the outside of that and what I've been doing is just taking a, a pencil that's really sharp and I'm just laying it up there, just a little simple scribe thing. I may have to do this a couple times. And I'll take this much off and then I'll have to do it again because I can, I can tell that I didn't get all of that in the first uh, scribing. So I'll go cut that off there and then come back and, and do it again. I'm keeping that pressed up against this pretty snug. And against the back. Just kind of sneak up on it. Well, we'll see what we got here. Let's see if we can get a close up on that. I think that probably will work. I'm gluing each of these treads down with the uh, F26 construction adhesive. Making sure I've got that good and clean. Putting it on pretty liberally.
I don't think I mentioned, but I'm taking my router just for the round over bit and rounding this end and the front. Gives it a little bit more of a, a finished look. I'm working out the uh, triangular shaped steps here. And it's a little bit tricky. It can be done. Um, what I do, I just start off with something that's square and work from that. And I just lay my, my framing square up there and get a straight edge that would be square off the front of the of the tread and work from that measuring back to inside the corner i don't worry about this length right here as i measure from the wall out to this point uh, right here now on this step i put my framing square up against uh, where the riser would be and i i got a square mark along the wall and i had to get a good tight measurement there and then I measured out to the outside of this of this wall here and got my point right here and made sure that I had the 5 8 uh, overhang here and brought this out to a point. And I'm using a roundover bit on the top side of the front edge here. On this particular step, I just came off the front to get me a square starting point and measured back into that corner to get part of it. And I was able to measure across here to the edge of the riser or the step below. And I had to make sure that I had my, my overhang here. So actually I was coming to this point right in here. And I let it come on out and I just clipped that point off there. I still got to take this and uh, put the round edge over it. I've got the angle steps on here. I'll take this kind of slow around the corner so you don't get dizzy and fall off. I couldn't really film up here. Not much of a place to put a camera. I've got a roll of butcher paper there that I'm laying on the steps to kind of keep me from making a mess with them. I've got the risers on, the four steps that carry on up to the loft. They're ready to put the treads on. I've started the handrails for the stairs and I've got two posts up here and I've got them anchored in. You can see those holes there. I've got eight inch lag bolts, three eighths lag bolts right here. And I countersunk these bolt heads. I drilled an inch hole, which I can turn some pegs or dowels out of cedar to fill that up. And I held the post out from the edge of the step I did not want to take up any of the, the distance on the steps themselves because they are rather narrow. And so I've got a block here that I attached to the back, back side of this, the post. And then I anchored this, just shot it on there with my nail gun. Then I drilled through and put uh, eight inch, three eighths lag bolts that goes through everything and into the step framing right here. I'll show you a little bit of a detail. I put a chamfer on the uh, the corners. It comes up four and a half inches from this bevel. I just cut this bevel right here on my miter saw on the bottom side just so it wouldn't look so square. This is the post at the at the top of the stairs on the loft floor. It's sitting on a block that I made and I drilled up through that block and up into the post, and I can anchor that block itself. It's sitting right over one of the uh, seven by nine floor joist beams. So well, I can anchor right down into the, that beam through the flooring, and I don't think it's gonna go anywhere. Okay, I've got the spindles set in there, and I'll kind of try to explain how I keep these on a certain center where the last spindle is. I like to have the same distance in between these two and have the same space. It, I like to keep it symmetrical. The way I do that, I have three spindles here and they are an inch and a half by an inch and a half. I add up the three spindles, which would be four and a half inches, and I subtract that from the length of this board right here, which I'm going to say 17 and three quarters. And then I'll divide this space here, there's, there'll be four spaces since there are three spindles. I'll divide that by four, and that tells me how much I need to put 
or how much distance in between. And I just make a, a little block. And as I put it together, I'll use that as my spacer. And that way, I can keep everything pretty close, symmetrical, and looking right. And I did the same thing on this. Even though this is going up the angle of the stairs, I did exactly the same thing. Now, it's a little bit more involved, not a whole lot. I measured from this post right here, straight up over to the post that's up there, and it was 46 inches. And I just kind of in my head figured out approximately how many spindles it would take, and it took nine. And I divided that out. I added up the width of the nine spindles, which is 13 and a half inches, and I subtracted that from the 46 inches. And then I divided it by 10 spaces, which turned out to be three and a quarter inches. Now, when I'm putting these together, I do it a little bit different. You can see my little spacer block here has the, the 35 degree angle on either end, and I could set it there, and I can use that as my spacer. Whereas I had to play with this just a little bit so that I have the three and a quarter inches between, and I can use this as an angle, or as the block is cut at an angle, and I used it setting in between each one all the way up, and it worked out great. So now I'm ready to put a cap, a board across here, and the one that goes all the way up, and I'll pretty much have the stairs finished.